Hi, it's Monday the 15th of March and I continue to read and wonder my way through Luke's Gospel. Today we're in Luke chapter 18 verses 18 through 27. I have a confession to make. Um, last week, um, all the meditations last week were all pre-recorded. I mean, I know they're pre-recorded, this isn't live. But I recorded them all on the Sunday afternoon before the week. I had a couple of things going on in the week that meant I would have to be out of town for a couple of days and I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So I recorded them all on the Sunday, just one after another. Um, and I hated it. <laughs> I realized now I really was not happy. Um, and I look back, I'm never doing that again. Um, I mean, on one hand, it's easy to do. You get into a rhythm, but there's no... There's no break in between to really think about it. So, you know, by the time I was reflecting on Thursday, I was still actually doing my Monday reflection in my head because I hadn't wondered as much. So uh, if last week's um, wonderings seemed a little, eh, I'm with you. They were a little that way to me too. I also realize how much I have come to value just sitting down every day and engaging the scripture, um, not because I have to, like I'm, uh, writing a sermon, not because it's directed, but, but because it's just part of my routine. And sharing these uh, little videos um, or audios, depending on how you're getting this, sharing these with you um, is, is uh, well, it makes me accountable. It makes me do it. So I have to prioritize it. Um, and it's made a real difference to me. Uh, I realize that it's been a year now. We're hitting the one year anniversary. So we've done a whole bunch of these. And um, thank you. I guess is what I want to tell you. Thank you for inviting me to be accountable. Thank you for giving me a reason to do this um, that doesn't just sort of feel self-indulgent. Um, and thank you for listening to me. Um, but even more so, I am really gratified that, that some of you are just are wondering along with me and sometimes disagreeing with me. And, and it's just, it's great. I'm really glad that we're able to engage in the scripture this way and, and hear... I hope you imagine it, you experience it the same way I do, hearing the Word of God. I mean, I really, it, the Scripture speaks to me when, when, when I get to do this. Um, so, anyway, all of that, I don't know why you needed to hear any of that. Probably didn't. In fact, if I'm smart, I should edit this out, except that I don't edit these. <laughs> so, um, so, let's get into it then. So, today it's Luke 18, verses 18 through 27. Uh, you may recall before the weekend, we've, we heard the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector and how the tax collector goes home right with God. Uh, we also heard that uh, we must be like children um, to receive the kingdom of God. We need, we need to receive it like children, otherwise we, we, we won't get it. Um, I've shared with you that my sense of the kingdom of God is that sense of eternity here and now. It's not a, a heavenly abode, a thing that happens after death. We can experience it now. Um, so rather than rehashing um, that meditation, uh, let's just remember the context as we move forward now. Luke 18, 18 to 27. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. He replied, I have kept all these since my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, There is one thing still lacking. Sell all that you own and distribute the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And then come follow me. But when he heard this, he, he became sad, for he was very rich. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard is it for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And those who heard it said, Then who can be saved? Jesus replied, What is impossible for mortals is possible for God. So... I don't know about you, my brain immediately goes to the stories that I was taught as a child and then as a teenager. Uh, this idea that there, you know, that there is a gate going into Jerusalem um, that's called the Eye of the Needle. 
and a camel can't get through it unless it kneels down. Um, yeah, turns out that that's not true. <laughs> um, and then all sorts of people say, "Well, yes, but you know, it, the 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 uh, you know, it, there, the eye of the needle could be a gate, or what we could be talking about is a big thread, and it's just really hard to do." And the more we analyze it, I, I guess, the more we're trying to, I think, let ourselves off the hook. Maybe um, I, I, I'm not I'm not exactly sure, but but I do know that most of the analysis that we've done. Is, is lovely mythology and great storytelling, but not historically accurate. Uh, there is no eye of the needle gate. Um, if there is now, there wasn't then. Um, and the idea that a camel would have to kneel, that, that none of that makes any sense. Uh, although that idea does sort of suggest that we can keep our money and we just have to humble ourselves. Maybe that's true. I mean, I am aware uh, that Jesus doesn't say to everybody, sell all that you own, distribute the money to the poor, then you will have treasure in heaven, and then, call, then come follow me. He doesn't say that to everyone. Um, and, and we hear this story told in other Gospels as well. So, so this encounter is, 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 a, is a familiar encounter. Um, so is it this person in particular who needs to let go of, of, of all their money? If I was there to, in front of Jesus, would Jesus say that I have to let go of my money? Well, my money is meager compared to this, this man's money. Uh, is it just money or is it the amount of money? Or is it my relationship to my money? I wonder. I, I find it interesting that at the beginning of this passage, we're told a certain ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Uh, a, a ruler what ruler are we talking about? What do we mean by ruler? Um, a local king? Well, no. We're, we're in the Roman Empire here. Um, and, um, I mean, surely if there was a king, we would know. So what, what, what's a ruler? What does a ruler within the Roman Empire mean? Um, is this, uh, would the 21st century equivalent be um, a wealthy businessman? A person who had a uh, hundred people working for him, or a thousand people working for him, he he rules. I I'm not sure. But this person is identifiable right away by the fact that they have power over other people. As soon as we see this person, we know this person has power over others, and that power we assume has also manifested for him great wealth. If you remember just a moment ago, although it was last weekend, last Friday, uh, we were reminded that we have to receive the kingdom of God like a child. Children don't, don't have power. Um, not when Jesus refers to children. Children don't have power. Children don't have wealth. Um, children rely very much on their, on their parents. Um, children are not self-sufficient. Um, so I wonder if this lesson is a continuation of that and, 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 and so we have somebody who, who does have power and does have wealth and is defined by those things but also has followed all of the rules right? you shall not commit adultery you shall not murder you shall not steal you shall not bear false witness honor your father and mother I have kept all these since my youth so this ruler this man is pious he, he does the right things and yet it's not enough. Is there a message in that? For those of us who cling to doing the right things outwardly, but we still allow ourselves to be defined by the world around us. I get to be defined by how much money I make. I am defined by the power that I hold over other people. When I was just told before that I need to receive the kingdom of God like a child. How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Not because God has anything against money, but because when we surround ourselves with wealth, when we focus on wealth, wealth becomes a defining feature for us. We are not defining ourselves by our relationship to God. That makes good sense. It is the kind of advice that 
that a wise relative would, would give. Don't take money seriously. Don't let it define you. Don't become a slave to your money. Um, but I know that Jesus wants a, a spiritual element to this. It's not just good advice. Um, but but we are told it, 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 it actually is is easier. We, we, we have to choose. It is easier <laughs> for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, something we know is impossible. Easier for that to happen than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. So hearing that, the ruler, the rich man, despairs. In fact, those listening to it, the one that who can be saved? Because indeed, if we if we look at it, it is hopeless. How? How can we possibly free ourselves up from the way our society works? We live in this world, so we are defined by our money and the power we have over other people. And we strive to, 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 to use that power for good, but we still hold on to it. You know, in this day and age, we hear a lot about, about, um, about allies. You know, we have various, um, various concerns uh, for justice and equity. And so I know many people who will define themselves as, well, I'm an ally to the LGBTQ community. I'm an ally to the BLM movement. I'm an ally to, uh, and then we go on. The, the thing with being an ally is it requires you to hold on to your power so that you can share it. Is that the best way to support the people that you love? Is that the best way to receive the kingdom of God? Is that the best way um, to achieve um, holy equity for all people if you have to hang on to your power so that you can use it well. I, I think that, that, that we're invited to really think about that because um, as long as we hold on to this power, as long as we are certain rulers, we are going to find it very, very difficult to enter the kingdom of God we're going to find it very difficult to share the kingdom of God if we're holding on to power, even though our mo even though our intentions are good. I'm holding on to it so I can I can I can be an ally to you. Now, what would happen if we let it go? What if would happen if we gave up our place at the table? What if we gave up our power and recognized that all power is is God's? What if we acted like children? and acquired nothing but relied on each other uh, relied on God um, you know that's the thing with kids they, they don't save for the future <laughs> well I'll be honest I'm not quite ready to do that I, I am of this world and I do try to save some money and I do worry about my future and those things and as much as I try not to let it be a motivator to me um, sure, the way that I am paid, the amount that I am paid, those things come to me as affirmations. Uh, Norm, you're doing a good job. We'd like to pay you more money. Right? I mean, I don't want to make that my motivator, um, but I would be lying if I said I was free of it, because I'm not. That's, how, that's when I recognize how hard it is to do these things. I want to be an ally, so I do want to hold on to that power a little bit. Um, I do want the affirmation because I am just a human being and it does help to hear that I am good or I am of value. And one of the ways we do that in this society is we give things of value. We give, we give people money. We pay them more. We tip them. I do want those things. And I don't know how to... Oh, wait a minute. The very last line. What is impossible for mortals is possible for God. I wonder if Luke in telling the story isn't inviting us to recognize that we can't do this ourselves. No matter how great our intentions, we really do need to ask for God's help. We do need to ask for God's guidance. We can't do it alone. I wonder. Or am I letting myself off the hook? <laughs> Saying, yeah, no, you can keep some of your money. I think that in this moment, I am meant to simply acknowledge that I really can't do this uh, myself. It's too complicated. It's too difficult. 
Um, but it's not too difficult with God. If I do what I can, I can also acknowledge that God is also working on the relationship with me. So if I ask for help, I shouldn't be surprised that it comes. Or maybe I'm missing this entirely. Maybe this is about stone gates and tall camels with packs on their back. I don't know. I invite you to do some wondering about it today. Um, it's a fairly well-known phrase, if not a little story. Um, call up a friend, have a chat with somebody, and say, you know that story in the Bible, I'm sure you remember, and just relate it the best you can. Could probably done in a sentence or two. And ask them what, what it means when they hear that. And have a discussion. Uh, maybe you laugh about it together, or maybe it's a grave discussion, I don't know. But I do think that when we can wonder about this with others, when we can hear other perspectives, when we can share ours and have it reflected back to us, that's where we're going to discover the Word of God. That's where we'll hear God actually speaking to us today, right now, where we are. I'm going to leave it there today, just offer a prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for today, this day, this moment of wonder. Thank you for the wondering that will come in the next hour throughout the rest of the day. God, let us not be afraid of your stories, of your questions. Let us not shy away from your challenge. And God, let us not shy away from your love because we know in our heads that nothing is impossible with you. But sometimes in our hearts, it's hard to accept that we can't do it all ourselves. God, let our relationship grow. Our relationship with you, let it deepen. Let it grow. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's me for today, but I look forward to checking in with you tomorrow. And it will be tomorrow. I'm not recording another one right now. Um, because I really like, I like the moment. So I hope today there's been a moment for you, and I look forward to sharing moments with you again tomorrow. Until, uh, until then, please know you are blessed. God sees you. God loves, acts, and lives through you. You matter far more than you could ever imagine. God bless. See you tomorrow.